so menopause has a massive shift in estrogen. It drops significantly. So we see a drop in resting energy expenditure. Actually, you know, it's at least 9% on average. So all of a sudden everything slows a little bit. Um, which we also see because we have the slowing of the powerhouse, the mitochondria, you actually see a slowing of what they call spontaneous physical activity by up to 30%. Um, what that means is, is, is not only are you slowing the engine of every single cell with the metabolic changes that happen during menopause, but we also are have a lack of inertia there's there's spontaneous movement and other physical activity is actually dampened because we sort of get this behind the scenes signal to not move around as much and we also store fat around the middle right and so all of our risks go up so now when we look at semaglutide um, semaglutide is a, what they call a glp1 receptor agonist um, and it is a hormone that your body makes as it makes in its gut and when you have enough of it, and it's very much tied to the microbiome, your brain gets told, hey, I'm full, stop eating, I don't need anything else. And it even slows that gastric emptying, right? The hormone is technically called an incretin hormone. Um, so it mimics this natural hormone that we would normally make. And so it, it does appetite control, uh, improves blood sugar control, and reduces gastric emptying, so therefore you get a slowing of digestion which improves blood sugar control and then therefore enhances insulin sensitivity and improving inflammation um, and so this was obviously developed as a type 2 diabetes drug first but we saw weight loss and therefore that's what we're doing now this study was conducted by the Mayo Clinic and published in menopause um, in 2024 and they took 106 postmenopausal women who were being treated with semaglutide and they were overweight or obese and they treated them for at least three months. They took one group and they put them on bioidentical hormone therapy and then on the other group, they did not use any hormone therapy. So this is why I think this is important because I think it's interesting. It's, um, it's not just because of the symbiotic effect of these two medications, it's the metabolic effect of what these medications do inside the body that makes the difference. Right, so what happened? So women on hormone therapy lost significantly more weight than the women who weren't, but both groups were taking semaglutide. Now, in the first three months, the hormone replacement therapy group lost 7% of their body weight compared to 5%, right, in the non-hormone group. At six months, it went to 13 and 9%. At 12 months, the bioidentical hormone replacement users lost an impressive 16% of their body fat compared to the group that didn't use hormones, which was at 12%. This is after they adjust, adjusted for things like age, starting weight, any kind of baseline health conditions, because you have to look at those things and parse those out to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Um, but it wasn't just about the weight loss. What they saw also was lower fasting glucose levels, lower cholesterol levels, lower blood pressure, and the bioidentical hormone group showed greater improvements in all of these metabolic markers. So it means that semaglutide isn't just helping with weight and, and health. When you pair it with hormone replacement therapy, i.e. putting a back a woman to what her natural state would be, you see a metabolic change that makes those medications work better. Now, what I want you to understand is hormones themselves aren't a weight loss tool, right? They aren't a weight loss drug. Although there are marketers online on Instagram and everything that will say, hey, get on your hormones and that will help you lose weight. Can they help you lose weight? Yes. It's because when you take estrogen, you restore some of those metabolic functions I went through earlier. When you take testosterone, your ability to build lean muscle mass improves. You've got better motivation, better dopamine levels, better, better fitness activities from the efforts you put forth because you have testosterone to help build muscle. When you have progesterone on board, our stress chemistry comes down, particularly if we're taking it orally, and we get more metabolites that help us bring up GABA, which is our natural anti-anxiety neurotransmitter. So it's calming, which means our sleep usually is better. And so when I get all those hormones on board as a premenopausal and menopausal to postmenopausal woman, I keep my metabolic function operating as if I didn't go into menopause. So that 15% body weight gain that's at least 70% of women experience starts to go away because we don't see that metabolic damage from losing those hormones.